then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boule. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boule. Well, my guest today is the, he's number one under Royal Commentator, under Google, MSN. He was the editor of International Who's Who for 25 years before becoming a Royal Commentator and film critic. Huh? We'll come to that later. Well, he is used nationally and internationally. He is a regular commentator on CNN for a, a recent royal wedding. Richard Fitzwilliams had 90 interviews, okay? Not to mention the lead up pieces to the 2018 royal wedding between His Royal Highness Prince Harry and Meghan. <sighs> Richard, you know what? This sounds like too much hard work to me, yet everyone would think it was so easy. I bet it, this is not easy at all. It's most certainly not easy, Patty, and you mentioned this various statistics, and it, you make it sound easy, but the point was that in fact it's taken many years of concentrated work to achieve this. I've been interested in the royal family ever since I was a child and my parents above my bed put a queen with the picture of the queen saluting in trooping the color which commemorates her official birthday on the horse <laughs> Burmese mm -hmm. where she always used to wear uniform and ride side saddle. That's right. Fascinated by the monarchy and by the world's monarchies, there's still over 40 of them, as you know. Yes. And when I was editor of International Who's Who, we had a special section dedicated to monarchies, and I could still keep up with the various individuals, and most particularly the British monarchy. And when I left after over 20 years, I decided this was something I really wanted to do to become a royal commentator nationally and internationally and there are various ways that's important to, to do this. For example, firstly, you seize on a particular topic, some royal wedding, some royal event. You send a press release round and then you follow it with calls so that the various outlets know at least that you exist and then you continue doing that Calls have to be very, very quick. But nonetheless, you cultivate your contacts. I was lucky with international who, of course, because I had international contacts. Yes. That was helpful. But this was completely different because I appeared on, you mentioned the 90 appearances on uh, the, the 2000. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. You were everywhere. It was great fun. <laughs> it was fun, but also with the... Um, wedding between uh, Harry and Meghan Markle, this was something that was even more fun yes. because there was such a long gestation period uh, and foreign press were able to interview me in packages for the, the, which they were doing on members of the royal family and also on the wedding. And also I did a lot for CNN and Yahoo.com used me live and there were a huge number of radio interviews. But That's the whole right, point was, yes. It's a question of balance, but this was the culmination of many, many years of work reading about individuals. You've got to read a lot about uh, the, the backgrounds to them, keeping track of royal events, also attending some of them, whether it's Royal Ascot, whether yes. Trooping the Colour, whether it was the inquest into the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, a whole series of them, so that you have an idea what you're talking about. For example, I attend the Buckingham Palace uh, Summer Exhibition previews as a launch party there, and I talk about that. And also, if there's, as you know, the Queen is someone who is absolutely unique. She is, isn't she? <laughs> when it comes to duty, when it comes to breaking every record going, and when it comes to personal Sense charm, of humour, too. Wonderful sense of humour. I've had the honour of meeting her on several occasions. It's so fascinating because 
at the various jubilees, there was such enthusiasm. So very gradually, with all these events, sending out press releases, keeping an eye on the royal scene, both nationally and internationally. You could do a piece on the Japanese royal family or, say, the Spanish. Yes. I mean, as you know, we've had the last nearly 20 years have been wonderful for the British royal family. But if you look, for example, at the 1990s, I mean, they were absolutely hellish. The, yes. <laughs> Yeah. As you know. Yes. But then look at Spain at the moment. They've had a really rocky They're ride. They're going so through. A, a, but, the, you know, I mean, there is no other royal family, I would say, in the world that compares to the British royal family. I did go um, and perform for King Hussein. And we had all the royals from all over the world. It was the 50th birthday. And he was then, there was then also the crown prince, Hassan, and, and his wife. And we were met at the airport by Prince Rashid. Oh, my goodness. I mean, talk about protocol. You see, this is where you, you kind of fall in love with princes, the training that goes into them. And, of course, protocol is quite a minefield, especially mm -hmm. if you're not used to it. Yes. And I, what I found was the more, for example, that you read about the royals, the more you watched both on television when you did the opportunity of attending a royal event, you could get very involved in it and you could, as it were, communicate an enthusiasm, a love for the traditions, the ceremonial, and also what the royal family means to Britain today. Yes. And communicate that to an audience. Head CNN or uh, BBC World or Sky or whatever might use you. But you'd also put out press releases. And if you did that, and you also followed, as I mentioned, you follow it up with a call, yes. then whether it's Turkish television or Japanese or France or Germany or whatever, they, or Austria, they, they will very possibly use you. The Antipodes as well. I also wanted the big challenge that I thought was so essential for this. How you keep, obviously not these interviews are very short, we've had the opportunity now to chat for quite a while, but if you have to cut something to three and a half or three minutes, you've That's really got to be tough concise going. Yeah. and you've got to get your points across and it takes it takes a whole wealth of knowledge in it, order to have an important three minutes and the, that knowledge must be communicated in a way that has a certain amount of showmanship yes. and the way to do that is rehearsal to move away from social media which is very important in its own way <laughs> tell but, me Richard where do you rehearse I, I so rehearse. you just stand in the room I do oh really no I do <laughs> I stand in, in my sports club, uh, it has empty rooms, and I go there quite often in the evenings or whatever, and I will stand there and rehearse my lectures, rehearse the fact that if there's a royal story, say you, say you had the royal wedding, yes. Harry and Meghan Markle, you break that down to Harry's family, Meghan's family, royal protocol at weddings. You've then got a whole series, whether it's the cake, whether it's the bridesmaids, whether it's the guests, whether it's uh, her career or whatever. Aye. And each one of them, plus the history. Remember, you've got to do your recce for St. George's Chapel. Where of course. The wedding, as you would with the Queen's Jubilees, for example, of St. Paul's or wherever. This adds an interest to it, so you can know the historical. The point is to know it. You don't want to bore a contemporary audience with too much history, <laughs> but if somebody, yeah. if you can slip in a detail, it shows. I tell you what I like when you talk about you know boring the viewers. What I love about you is that when you're watching, you have such enthusiasm that you you almost jump out of the television. So how do you you know when you're practicing? Do you practice? I don't know. Do you practice an in, a, in other words, you know, sometimes if I'm introducing this, then I smile and go, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, but here's the danger, Pat, because yeah. you just, as obviously use, the use of the hands is interesting. Some, a broadcaster like, say, Richard Quest on CNN is, yes. or indeed Simon Skarmer, the historian, yes. they have made a career around the way they use their, their hands. hands yeah. I think for me, for example, I tend to put my hands there. It's very important to I know, you do. To, you to do, actually. Manage. Because you got the protocol as well. Because you have to fit into the protocol, which is very important. It's therefore important to have a suit mm -hmm. and t definitely tie, I think, absolutely vital if you want a certain image as a world commentator. But equally, you've got to make sure that is reflected on your website, which I've changed over the years. Yes. And which, as you mentioned <laughs> very kindly, is uh, certainly looked at quite a lot. But yes. equally, in an age of social media, you obviously you want to be able to express yourself. You also want to practice your memory and you want to make sure that you get 
points one, two, three, or whatever in your three minutes so that you allow, for, say, for three questions. It's important, to, firstly, to communicate what you've got to say, but secondly, you don't want to feel, make the interviewer feel that they can't ask any questions or they've got trouble in, in interrupting you. Yes. So it's just that balance. You know, I mean, okay, this is what, for, for the viewers for, you know, this program, Protocol is very important, okay, because I see young people, let's look at young people who want to go for an interview in a bank, okay, I have seen them. So they have this, they put on a t-shirt, this is a bank they're going to, they've got a pair of jeans with the knickers showing at the top, you know, one of those gangland type things, and I'm thinking, oh, protocol Etiquette so important for the next generation. For the next generation, it opens doors. It definitely opens doors. The younger people will often look at the royal family and they'll think there's so much protocol that it's stuffy. But I would argue it that it's there for a purpose. Precisely, and, and it becomes natural once you practice. But it's important yeah. also to mention with monarchy that it is an evolving institution, so it does change. And for example, I mean, uh, Meghan, uh, an American divorcee, biracial, former actress, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, that marriage that have wasn't gonna marriage. happen. No, that was not gonna happen. <laughs> and it is now, and everyone's yeah. applauded it. Yeah. So that shows, you know, that the institution does, just like 101 years ago, it changed its name during the First World War from Schleswig Holstein mm -hmm. uh, to, um, no, sorry, it changed its name. Uh, f from a German name to uh, Windsor, Windsor mm -hmm. and that made it English, so to speak, and English in people's minds so that they could relate to it. And the monarchy is, there is when we're in a rather uncertain future politically, and it's a fair point, the Queen and the monarchy represents national unity and above party politics. I know some of them are campaigners. Prince of Wales, for example, is one example who, you know, will... He's my favourite. Be careful. He has very strong <laughs> views, and I wasn't going to disagree <laughs> with his I love views. him. Be careful. <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah. One of the things I do as mm -hmm. a royal commentator is debate the monarchy. It's pluses and it's minuses. I know, I love the debates you do. But yeah. they are fun, but equally you have to prepare and you know, for example, someone's going to fight you for time. Yes. Now here's a problem with the, when you're fighting for time over a particular issue. If you have a strong, loud voice, that helps. But on the other <laughs> hand, just a little tip for viewers, if you happen to be in the studio and the other person is on the telephone line, you've got the advantage over them. That's true. That it's is very helpful. true. Yeah, that's very true. And the third thing is to be be prepared, know your facts. Know them mentally and if possible, stride around the room alone and just recite some of the things you know about it, uh, whatever topic it is. Because you do want them on your, the tip of your, uh, you know, to be able to recall instantly. Exactly, yeah. Otherwise, right. uh, the other person, they will feel very strongly the other way and uh, even if yes, that could be it. distracting, couldn't it? I, I know because you, you know you uh, sometimes being on a panel, you kind of lose what you you leave the panel. And you think I should have said this and I should have said That's that. That's the point. It's, that is, yeah. And very often, one of the things I find useful is if you record some of the interviews you've done, listen to some of the radio, look at the television, and see. Firstly, do you use the same adjective too many times? Do I you? should try that because I've, I never, I hate watching myself. I should try doing that, yeah. Oh, but Patty, you're so photogenic. Uh, besides, Keep it I've, coming, Richard. Keep <laughs> it coming. I will, I will. <laughs> I'm simply reciting a fact. A fact, and also, I mean, as a, say, a noted singer too, yes. facts of the matter are, I, it's um, others would enjoy and do love watching you. Whereas if you're a commentator in a suit, one thing you don't want to be called, for example, is a stiff in a suit. That's somebody true. who can't communicate to younger yeah. people. Yeah. Somebody also who seems a bit above things. Or alternatively, they could be nervous. They could genuinely be nervous, be nervous and be unable yes. to communicate. That's right. And that's the case. They won't appeal. People yes. will switch off. And they've got yes. such a short attention span. Because this isn't a question just of Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or the other. Um, I mean, I use Google Plus, too. Yeah. It helps because I found using social media, 
it just helps to boost the profile, but also continue sending out your press releases, post them online by all means, but don't forget the rehearsals, so to speak, the human touch, and keep that enthusiasm going when you're that actually enthusiastic on is very enthusiasm is very important. I wanted to ask you about, you know, when protocol and etiquette, um, what is the two words, if you had two key words that you could describe protocol and etiquette, I have my own two words, what would it be? Protocol what would they be? and etiquette. And etiquette, what are the two key words? That, well, one uh, of them would obviously be manners, mm -hmm. which okay. is related to that, and the other, I think, second word to describe protocol and etiquette, uh, but there's a certain formality, uh, there is, about it. But, respect. Uh, yes, respect. And consideration. Uh, consideration, respect, but also it's interesting to remember that when it comes to the monarchy and yes. the Donald Trump uh, visit, for example, mm -hmm. there was a great deal of dispute whether or not he bowed before the Queen. But he didn't have to, whether or not Melania Trump curtsied, but she didn't have to. It's well worth remembering what happened in 1981. It's interesting. What happened with uh, Obama and Michelle Obama? Because I, I miss that. What did they do when they, because they seem to have got on very well. They got on extremely well with yeah. the Queen, uh, but quite interestingly enough, Michelle Obama in 2009 put her arm around That's the right. Queen. That's right. I knew there was something. And that caused Quite a storm, know, except I that know. the Queen reciprocated by putting her arm around Michelle Obama. And yes, so, because it yes. was the royal because I, reciprocation, it was I all right. I think it was done, for me, when I first saw it, I didn't see it when it happened. I saw when all the furore happened, okay? And I, and I thought, no, it's something you do to a grandmother. That's what a black culture is. When you meet a grandmother, that's the first thing you do, okay? And I think the Queen recognized that. And a lot of commentators, of course, didn't recognize that. Of course so they don't. It was. <laughs> yes, well, it was. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mind you, they, that had been done once before, and that was uh, years previously. But it was by done, Paul. it wasn't done the same way. No, not the Australian. Uh, Paul Keating. Precisely. Uh, known as the Lizard of Oz <laughs> by those who didn't like him, put his arm around the Queen, <laughs> and uh, that was not appreciated. It just... No, it wasn't. Even I didn't appreciate that because it was the way he did it. Okay, there's, so there's, you know, I always think that approach is everything. And also Which the comes to what you do, approach is everything. Approach and intention, and the queen can judge. Well, she's old enough well to judge. She's certainly yeah. amazing. Huh? Uh, at 92, oh, she's doing, as you know, this year she's done more engagements than she had in the six months prior. I'm kidding, prior. seriously. The six months prior to the same uh, period last year. It's just amazing, 150 or so engagements. It's quite extraordinary. I mean, Royal Ascot, I saw her there. I mean, that's her favorite week of the year because she's such an expert in the equine. She and that's is. another joy for a royal commentator yes. because it so happened I used to cover London Fashion Week. And of course, that links with a great. Did you really? No, I loved it. Can you imagine anything more exciting, Patty? And with your interest in clothes and colourful You're kidding me. We need to talk later. We do. You covered we do, we Fashion do. Week. <laughs> hey, yes. that's pretty good. I didn't know that about you, Richard. And <laughs> then seeing them at Ascot, yes. seeing these people, a lot of them, turn up in absolutely glorious outfits and some of them absolutely terrible outfits. It's <laughs> so fun. The mix is, is yes, entertaining. I, yes, well, I was there. I saw some outfits and I thought, whoa, okay. Not so did I. You Not had allowed. a glorious red hat on. I did. Uh, I did. did it, was, it was big, wasn't it? It was, it was, uh, was it Audrey Hepburn red? <laughs> Audrey Hepburn <laughs> is so stylish. It's interesting. Oh, interesting you mention is. Audrey Hepburn because Meghan Markle, uh, now the Duchess of Sussex, of course, she turns up the first day of Ascot. I wondered whether they'd go this year. I the reason why was when William and Kate married in yes. 2011. It was five years before they actually went to Royal Ascot. Mm -hmm. But not until 2016, but in fact, Harry and Meghan were there opening day and she wore a she wore Givenchy with a Philip Tracy hat. And that was a tribute to Audrey Hepburn, which brings us full circle as to, firstly, the royal influence on fashion. Secondly, isn't it absolutely gorgeous at Asuka? There's a vast kaleidoscope of colours. It's so exciting. Oh, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. And you've got the royal procession dating back from 1825. And one of the fascinating things about being a royal commentator, you're actually talking about an institution that goes back over a thousand years with only one gap, which was, of course, the Civil War in the 17th yes, century, yes. when Cromwell was 
briefly in charge and the country welcomed back Charles II and were really too delighted to get a king. And it's interesting too, you mentioned the British monarchy being the world's most important. Of course, oh, they, I, I think, it is. Yeah, I well, think it is because I remember 2002, you, you know, I was on the committee the for the Queen's Golden Jubilee. Golden Jubilee. Yeah, were well, you there when I made my speech, I, impromptu speech at the on p and building? Were you there? No, I you didn't. weren't there. Okay. Well, that was, yeah, Major Sir Michael Parker got me up to speak. And, you know, it was, oh boy, it was, it was, it was a nightmare, but I was so proud of myself because of the things. I, I, I suddenly realized what a royalist I was, a great royalist I was. So that was really, Richard, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is. Patty, to have you today. Life. I feel like I've been given an education. <laughs> ah, but the thing is also, there's an educative aspect to it's wonderful. the colourful and the fascinating, but there's also so much fun. There's also, of course, as we must mention, Commonwealth links, and that especially applies yes, to young people course. because such a large percentage of the Commonwealth are young. And, of course, the Queen's taken such personal interest in yes, the Commonwealth, as you know. And also the fact that Prince Charles is going to be the head of the Commonwealth, which wasn't automatic, that's important. So Amen. One there day... you go. We finish on the note of my favourite royal. <laughs> <laughs> thank fatty. you so much, Richard. It's, it's so good pleasure. to see you, and thank you for coming to join us. Thank Pleasure. You.